Hello and welcome to another episode of Humans in Five. We've talked a fair bit about some of the unique characteristics of being human on this channel. We've talked about breasts, bums, periods, childbirth, orgasms, skeletons, and how these differ with our primate relatives. We can also add our lifespan to this list of special characteristics. That's right. Humans have a comparatively long lifespan for our body size. The average lifespan for a human is about 79 years. Whilst this will change depending on where you live and your lifestyle, we have about the same number of years in our life as elephants. It's not just our lifespan that's unique, it's how we spend our time in that lifespan. Humans have a post-reproductive lifespan, a time where we're doing everyday living, but we're not doing the thing that all living creatures spend a lot of their energy on, which is making babies. For example, human females go through menopause, where their menstrual cycles gradually stop and they're no longer able to get pregnant. This seems counterintuitive. If the point of being alive, from an evolutionary perspective, is to reproduce, why do humans have this time period of non-baby making but continuing to thrive? Researchers have been looking into this question for a while. In the 1960s, biologist George Williams suggested that menopause might be an adaptation that allowed non-reproductive people to help out with childcare particularly with childcare within their own biological family. This would ultimately increase the likelihood that these kids survived and thrived, which also supports the success of their own genetic information. In the 1980s, anthropologist Kristen Hawkes collected data on the lifestyle amongst the Hadza people, a group of hunter-gatherers living in Tanzania. She found that menopausal women, often grandmothers, were really active in their community. They gathered food and did a lot of hands-on caring for their grandchildren. Hawke's work suggested that having grandmothers help out freed up time and energy for their own daughters to keep having children, knowing that their little ones were being safely looked after. This became known as the grandmother hypothesis. Other researchers started to pick up on this and looked at survival and health levels of children living in proximity to their grandmothers. A study looking at this in 17th century Quebec found that child mortality was reduced with grandmothers living within a 300 kilometer radius of their grandkids. Like many scientific theories, the grandmother hypothesis does have its weak points. For example, how does this hold up in human groups where women may leave their natal group to find a partner in another community? Whilst grandmothers may aid in caring for children, wouldn't they also represent an added person who will require food and shelter, maybe cancelling out the amount of help they're providing? Grandmothers can be a pretty broad term too. Grandmothers can range in age and ability to help out with the family. A study carried out at the University of Turku in Finland found that grandmothers aged 50 to 75 did help with the survival of their grandchildren in 17th century Finland. But after 75 years of age, their health impacted their ability to help with the family and was actually detrimental to the survival of grandchildren. A lot of these studies are carried out with data from the past. These days we may be living with large distances between all family members, including grandparents. Many people around the world have to do paid work into older age groups, which means that even if they are close by, they may not be able to help out, even if their health allows them to do so. But the grandmother hypothesis shows that there are lots of ways to look at the unique elements of the human lifespan. So let's hear it for grandmothers and every other person who's helping out with the next generation. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time on Humans in 5. And don't forget to subscribe.